part six of our series on queries in Microsoft Access databases. And we're going to be looking at a calculated field or fields that we can use in queries. Now, what is a calculated field? Well, first of all, the little tip that we gave you in the first series on tables was that you shouldn't store any data in your database tables that can be calculated because you're just wasting space. Anything that can be calculated like normally with the information that you've got, don't store it because you can calculate it. Now, I said that. Now, how do we calculate? Well, in queries, you can calculate the values. So we can have a special uh, column which has the, the calculated value or calculated field. And there are three steps to calculated fields. If you don't know how to do a calculated field, I would recommend that you follow this three-step program to help you do your calculated fields. So step one, what do we need to do? Well, in the unused column, so a column that's not used in your query design, right at the top of the column in the field row, the right at the top, not in the criteria, the field row, enter in an equal sign. So let's look here. So there we can see a query. That's me. We've selected the first name, the surname, the pay, the number of payments. And there in a new column, right at the top, not in criteria, but right at the top there in the field, that's where you put an equal to sign. That's step one. Now you know where you're going to be typing it in. Step two. Now you are going to enter in a formula. And if you need to use values from other fields, you can use those field names. But remember, you must use them as they are spelt in the database. So let's say in this scenario, we want to work out the average number of or average paid based on the number of payments. So if you've paid 100 Rand and you made five payments in the average payment would have been 100 divided by five, if that makes sense. So we want to take that paid field and divide it by the number of payments field. So there we go. I'll type it in. There's my formula. I've used the field names. Um, you can use other numbers. If you want to work out like the VAT, you can times it by 1.1. Uh, 5 or whatever you want or 0.15 if you want to work out VAT values and stuff like that um, so you can type in normal numbers but if we're referring to field names in those calculations use them as they are spelt so there we go so that's the first that's the first step and the second step done what is step three we're nearly there step three of our program step three is you press enter once you've done that and then some text will be added automatically to your calculated field in the front and then it'll be a colon and then it'll be your actual calculation that you just entered. So it looks something like that. You'll press enter, boom, and like, okay, it said EXPR1 colon and then your formula. You'll notice there that the, the formula has got uh, square brackets around it now, the values. Just a reminder that I recommended that you do not use spaces in your field names. Um, so if you do by some chance have a database where there are spaces in the field names, then in your calculation, make sure that you put square brackets around the names because otherwise it's going to think that num space payments would, are two different fields. So just put square brackets around your fields if there are spaces. If there are no spaces, just type them as it is and then Access will do the rest for you. But we are at step three here. That EXPR1, what is that? What is that? That is the, the label or the title that's going to be put in the column at the top. So this our calculated field is going to have the EXPR1 right at the top. This is what the label for this uh, column, this field is going to be. So we don't want it to say EXPR1. We want to give it our own value. So we're going to say, hey, I want to call it, um, I want to change that EXPR1. I want to change it to average payment. That's the title I want. And so there we go. I put in average payment. If you want to put spaces in, put it in double, I put it in square brackets so that it knows that it's one thing. So there we go. Average payment. And so there is my calculated field. I've got a calculated field called average payment. And the calculation for it is taking the paid field and divided by the number of payments field. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. So there we go. We've got all our fields. And there at the end, there's average payment. Do you notice at the top, it's called average payment? That's the name that we gave it. If we left it EXPR R1, it would say EXPR1 at the top there. So there we go. There is our calculated field. Now, the one thing I don't like about this calculated field, if you notice, like we're dealing with paid, which is a currency divided by a number. So technically, average payment should be a currency. And that's just a number. I don't like how that looks. Well, if you want to change that, um, you can go back to your calculated field and you can right click on that column for average payment and you'll get the options to change the properties. So change the properties and you can change the format to a decimal uh, or change it to a currency or something like that. If you wanted to do that, you could do that. Okay, let's look at this example. Just look, have a look here. So we want to find the average. This looks exactly the same, but it's not. 
look there, the, the, the field's called number of num payments, but in the calculator field, they use the word number of payments. That, there is no field called number of payments. It's num payments. They spelt it wrong. Now, what happens if you do make a mistake and you spell something wrong? Well, a box like this will appear when you go to view the query. So when a box pops up and it asks you for a value for a field, and you go, but that should get it from the field. That means you've spelt it something wrong. So that number of payments you know is wrong. So that's how you know you must go and correct it. So just to recap our three-step program on how to do a calculator field. Step one in the unused column at the top in the field row, enter in an equal to sign. Step two, enter a formula. And if you're using fields in your formula, make sure that you spell them correctly. If they have spaces, remember to put them in square brackets. And three, press enter. And then this whole text will appear with a colon in front of it. Just change that little text that just appeared to whatever name you want to put at the top. If you know how to the format of a calculator field, you can just type it in as is. But if you're not too sure, if you forget, just follow this lovely three-step program. So yeah, we've got our database with some lovely data in. So let's do some calculations. I'm going to go and create a query. Query design. And we're going to go add the table. Boom, boom. Close this. So we want to put the name, first name and surname. And we want to work out the average number of payments. So I'm going to come here to, I want to, how much is paid. And I want the average number of payments. So if that's the case, so look at first step one at the top in the field row, we're going to put an equal to sign. Now, before I do that, just so that you guys can see everything, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. So at the top in the field row, see I'm going to equal to step one, step two, type in your formula. Well, we want to take the paid field divided by the number payments field. But remember, it must be spelled exactly the same. Oh, num payments. No, oh, that's wrong. So we must make it exactly like it is. Num payments. Step, that's step two. Step three, press enter. And it will put in this expr1 and it'll put the fields and that in square brackets. I'm, I'm not worried about the square bracket. I'm worried about this. If I forget step three and I just run the query, it'll do the results. But you see that expr1's at the top. I don't want that. I want that expr1 to be the word average payments average payment and then we go run it so we can see it there we go we've changed the name done all three steps run it and there we go there's the average payment so they've made a payment of that amount and there's only one of them so obviously that's going to be the, the average payment just it so there we go so that's great now if i don't want to change that that value i want to say hey, you know what i'm going to right click on this go to properties and we're going to change that format to some sort of decimal number Oh, currency, currency is better, boom. So there we go. Now it looks a little bit better. So there we go. All the different payments, average payments, boom, boom, yay. So now we can see all our values, and that's great. Maybe I want to add in a VAT column. Oh, let's go add some VAT. Let's close this property. Um, the VAT amount, VAT amount. Well, let's follow the steps. Equals, what do I want to do? I want to find the VAT amount on how much they've paid, which is 15% of the paid. So equals. Step two, 15%, that's 15 divided by 100%, is times, 50% of, is, uh, of means times, so 15% of times the paid field. So type in the paid field, you can press enter or click away, or change that to the VAT amount. And if I run it, there you can see 15% of the amount paid, and there's the VAT amount, which I can change to a currency as well. If I change paid to paid, so it's wrong, I'll run it now. Ooh, now you can see what that box looks like. Hey, I made a mistake. I cancel. Let's go back. Oh, no, it's paid, not paid. Okay, so those are the three steps in doing a calculated field. In our next video, we'll show you some other formulas that you can use in your calculator fields that can have, give you some extra options with dates and text and so on. So go watch that next video. For the other video that I just mentioned, as well as other videos on Access, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, click on the like button. We'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.